here's Ed Bernstein. Hi, my guest today is the busiest man in downtown Las Vegas. It's a close race between you and the mayor. I mean, it's uh, on who pays more attention, who does more work, and who's more preoccupied with downtown. Ed, great, right to, great to see you. Thanks, uh, thanks yeah. for that intro. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, every time you look, today's paper, I mean, you're talking, doing stuff with the uh, Youth Hockey League, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, you just bought uh, the properties on Fremont Street, and uh, you just got approved by the uh, Planning Commission to do a 777-room um, hotel, first new hotel on Fremont Street in forever. You bought that, uh, that old um, courthouse property, you have the event center downtown, you have, uh, you know, I mean, running the D Hotel itself would be a monumental task if you only did that, right? Well, you know, I'm fortunate. Uh, we've got, we've got a pretty good team, so I've got a lot of great people around me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we try to keep things, uh, keep things hopping. We're always trying to th throw, uh, throw a party or, uh, or have an event, and uh, we try to do it every night. You know, I I've, I've had my office downtown for over 40 <clears throat> years. I've watched it, watched people be very optimistic about downtown. I've watched people be disappointed up and down, up and down for 40-some years. Somehow, you have managed to, to do things downtown that other people haven't. Why? Well, I, you know, I could say maybe we got a little lucky. We came in at the right time, you know, uh, bought into the Golden Gate in 2006, and then all of a sudden the economy really, really crashed in 08 and 09. Right. And really what it did is it set up, it set up um, an environment that was very friendly to further investment. And I think we're seeing that a lot around the country right now where you've got cities are seeing a tremendous amount of new investment come in. Um, Detroit's an example, uh, but clearly downtown Las Vegas is the same thing. So I think uh, maybe we got lucky, right place, right time, and then uh, bring a lot of great people in and uh, try, try to make something happen. How has Fremont Street changed for, um, today compared to when you first got there? Oh, I'd say it's changed quite a bit. I mean, you know, we went from, I think uh, when I got here, about 11, 12 million visitors a year. And, you know, last year, over 24 million people visited downtown. So it's... It doubled. That's, that's yeah. And, and second highest visited tourist destination in America after Times Square. That a lot street. of people don't. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, yeah, it's really taken off. And you know, I think I think there is a there's just so many factors that came into play. Uh, you know, some people ask me now, like, you know, they look at Golden Gate and they see this outside bar. And I don't know if a lot of people remember the story, but we were the first ones to ever go to the city to ask to put an outside bar uh, along Fremont Street, and it created this atmosphere of you know people hanging out, kind of like a. Bourbon Street type of right. atmosphere. Yeah. But one thing a lot of people forget about was when we went to the city to ask for that, that was a very controversial request. And and most people thought, why on earth would you put a bar on the outside of a casino when you're in a city when you can get free drinks just by walking inside? So, so you know, people kind of forget about uh, some of the thought process on that. But, you know, it's kind of grown. And now, uh, now, now you know, Fremont Street's really where... Uh, where America comes to have a good time and, and have a party. Yeah, I mean, it kind of re reminded me of what the, um, they did in Las Vegas Strip. A lot of the Strip hotels came forward out into Las Vegas Boulevard to be, instead of being set back, right. all the, you know, spring the retail up front. I mean, it was a, obviously um, a, 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 um, an interesting move that had a lot of ramification on, on Fremont Street, you know, and now, now it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's expected. <clears throat> On Fremont. If you have a property on Fremont Street, you want to be out on the street where the people, well, look, you want to be where the people are, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a difference between the people who walk by your front door and the people who come in your front door. Mm -hmm. You capture them both. Yeah, I mean, eventually everybody comes inside. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing is I think, I think the, the one key element on, on Fremont Street you see is everybody's down, downtown and they're all smiling. They're all, they're all happy and they're all... Mm -hmm. they're, they're all uh, you know, looking to have a, looking to have a good time. So you know, they, they'll uh, they'll hit the slots, hit the tables, buy a couple of beverages, and uh, you know, I think I think downtown's now become a, a really wonderful area, very complimentary to the strip. 
Sometimes people ask, oh, do you compete with this? Not, not really. I mean, it's, we have a different model. I mean, there's only 6,000 hotel rooms downtown, 150,000 on the Strip. So I think really what Fremont Street provides is, is really complimentary. It's another attraction. It's kind of like what T-Mobile is or Top Golf or more attractions, more things for people to do in Las Vegas, and I think that's great. Yeah, but I think you, you really need to give yourself more credit because when if somebody comes into Las Vegas for four days, you know one of those days they're going to be heading downtown to check it out, right? They may not necessarily be going to the T-Mobile or, uh, or to the golf place, but they are checking out downtown. Well, we certainly hope so. I mean, we, we, hope, uh, we hope they come and uh, spend a few hours and, and uh, have a good time and have a great experience and go back to uh, Main Street USA and tell their friends, hey, we've got to go to Vegas. When you, and I think I may have spoken to you about this a couple of years ago, but when you purchased the Fitzgerald Hotel, um, which was the name before the D, it had kind of a um, blasé, boring reputation. I mean, it was just kind of there. It never really did well. I mean, it wasn't, it was kind of overshadowed by the Golden Nugget and some of the other, you know, Plaza, some of the other properties down there. Um, you made some changes in, in the image of the hotel. What were some of the, the things that you, when you look back, that, that really were successful for you? Well, you know, when we bought Fitzgerald's, <clears throat> we never bought the name. And, and we didn't buy the name because we knew we were going to re rename it and rebrand the property. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've, we were going to put some money into it, so we renovated all 34 stories, added new suites, new hotel rooms, renovated both floors of the casino. But we, thought, we felt that the rebrand was going to be very critical. So we just tried to bring in um, a number of different ideas that, had, that brought a lot of energy. To, uh, to the property. Mm -hmm. So I would say obviously the full renovation had a big impact, but, but really I think uh, the, the amount, of, amount of nights we spent trying to come up with ideas to add energy and, mm -hmm. and to bring people downtown, that, that's probably the key thing. Yeah. Now you're working on this new hotel. Do you have a name for it yet? New Hotel Casino? Uh, yes. <laughs> you, 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 next question, are you just closing it? Or? No, it's still, it's still a little bit early. We, uh -huh. We've been working on it. We've been working on the branding. Right. I think, uh, you know, we're right about, we're, we're right about there. We're, uh, we, should, uh, we should have some announcements about the new property, uh, not, too, not too far in the distant future. Now, this property is across the street from, from the D. Across from the Golden Gate. From the Golden Gate. Yes. Right. I, well, it's on the other side of the street from the D. Is oh, yes. On, yes. On Fremont Street. It encompasses um, the old Las Vegas Club, which was, you know, one thing about the Las Vegas Club, had a great history of sports. Uh, Mel Exper and Jackie Gwan and the guys that, you know, put that together. I mean, they had memorabilia in the hotel. They were big sports fans, and right. so are you. Yeah. Are you going to keep that theme? Well, you know, I think, I think what, what, what Mel Exper did and, and how it got, and Jackie Gwan, what, what was created um, was great for that era. Um, we certainly um, are a bit sports orientated, mm -hmm. uh, but I think you know there's some uh, there's some new new elements that come along with it. Um, we're going to have some uh, some great access to uh, sports betting. Um, we're we're going to have uh, an awful lot of fees. We're gonna, we really want to be the place where you can watch any game. You know, no matter where you went to college, no matter no matter mm -hmm. what pro sports team. Uh, you, uh, you're, you're a fan of. We're, uh, we're really going to try to focus on make sure that uh, your game's on, and, and, and we're going we're gonna to focus on some new elements of sports these days. When did you become a, a big sports fan? Something oh. from being a kid. I mean, you always, did you play? Um, you know, I, I grew up playing baseball, right. um, and uh, I've always been a sports fan. I've, I've loved math. I've loved I love sports, and it kind of kind of came together. And you know, if you take somebody that likes competition and sports and likes math, obviously you can figure out. I started gambling when I was about twenty. And uh, what was the first bet you made? Was it a, a sporting event, a horse race? What was it? You know. I I, uh, I was enamored as a as a little kid by a television show called the NFL Today, and uh, and uh, there was this guy that was on the show. I mean, everyone knew Brent Musburger and Phyllis George, but there's this guy, a very different character, <laughs> called Jimmy the Greek, right. and he predicted games. and And I thought it was kind of interesting. And I, oh God, I was a little kid, seven eight years old, and I was kind of enamored by it. So. I've always enjoyed I've always enjoyed watching watching football. Baseball was always the thing I grew up with, so I, I've always just loved sports and, and, and the competition and, and what it creates. Jimmy the Greek was a famous uh, uh, bookmaker, um, had a, probably the most famous 
alive at that time. Was he successful? Well, I, you know, I guess I, how do you how do you determine success? You know, he died with some money. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he uh, he obviously was was someone that broke molds. I mean, he talked about things that that really couldn't be talked about. And in, in the old days, obviously, the NFL had to have a very public and strong stance against sports gambling. Right. Uh, but Jimmy the Greek um, kind of created something new, and 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 obviously there was high demand. Um, for sports fans to make a wager on their team, and mm -hmm. and and his character was something that America, I think, I think liked. So I think, uh, I think certainly as a visionary, um, he impacted he impacted society. So I, I would say, yeah, he was pretty successful. Now, you went to school in Michigan. Michigan was in the, the <clears throat> finals uh, this last year with uh, Villanova NCAA basketball final. Um, I heard that you made a little bet. On that game, yes. Um, I mean, there's two really famous bets in Las Vegas. One was when um, Bob Stupak bet a million dollars. I right. forgot what he bet it on. It was a Super Bowl bet. A Super Bowl it? bet. Yeah. Okay. And and, and you bet a million dollars on this on this game. Well, yeah. Maybe maybe I can I can clarify it a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Tillman Fertitta bet the million dollars oh, okay. because I uh, I bet uh, twenty five thousand at forty to one. On Michigan, so oh, I so I bet the 25, but Tillman took took a lot more risk than I did, uh, but we had a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, I've had a lot of fun with the Golden Nugget as my next door neighbor, and uh -huh. uh, you know, their sportsbook director Tony Miller, and uh, and and obviously up 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 through uh, their owner Tillman Fertitta. So we we had some fun with it, and boy, we came close. That's for sure. Yeah, and when he loses a million dollar bet, okay. I lose a hundred dollars in a in a table game. You know, it's kind of upsetting to me. When you somebody loses a million dollars, what's what's the reaction like? I don't know, but I'm going to try to figure it out. I'm going to keep trying until <laughs> I get them. So I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> you, you mentioned you're going to do a sports book at your new property, right? Right. You have grand plans for that. We do. I I'm a, I'm a big believer that um, that sports uh, is is on a significant. You know, increase of, of what's happening. Mm -hmm. I think, I think when you see <clears throat> what what's happening with with programming and and how people want to watch games live, and you see younger people coming up, you know, that they're so interested in in all elements of sports. So we're seeing it in a broad range of sports. I mean, I was I was a little bit surprised this summer of the interest level in the World Cup and the amount of wagering on the World Cup. It was really stunning. Over the course of the last year. To think of the amount of in, the increased wagering on hockey, particularly here in Las Vegas and on the, on the Golden Knights, really amazing. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a sports book as a key uh, key feature of our new property, and and uh, and I think that that's a that's a very strong growth area. Now with the Supreme Court ruling as well, I think you know with sports gambling being more um, more open and more recognized, I think we're gonna see programming change as well when. There's going to be more openness about talking about point spreads and lines, and and mm. uh, yeah, sports is going to be a key element to the to the new property. You want to talk about the Supreme Court ruling, and just uh, let our viewers know what it was. Uh, you know, there was a uh, um, a case in the Supreme Court that would have legalized sports betting federally around the country. Right, certain states had it for a while. Nevada was the only state that had it for a number mm -hmm. of years. Then other, New Jersey wanted to have it. Was it New Jersey to file yeah, that case? Yes, it was New Jersey. Yeah. And the Supreme Court ruled that opened up the doors, right? Yeah. It's a state's, right, state's rights issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the states are able to set their own, uh, their own um, guidelines, their own laws with regards to sports wagering. And uh, now we're seeing that now, uh, you know, it's more than just Delaware and now New Jersey and and other states other states are now in the hopper, and <clears throat> a lot of people have asked me, are you worried? Will that will that impact uh, Nevada's sports wagering? And um, you know, I I I really took a position for about a year, kind of wait and see, but but I feel pretty strongly with what's happening. This is only going to help Nevada, and and the reason is is because you're going to see more and more discussion about sports and sports wagering on national television shows. Which increases the interest level, right. and then and then I think that that w we have to realize in Nevada this is still the gold standard. Um, you know, other states are now getting into this, 
but they've got different tax rates and and frankly in sports with a higher tax rate it's 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 very difficult to compete so las vegas um you know and all of nevada is still going to be still going to be the hub for uh for all sports wagering in the country yeah you no know, i remember in 1976 we had the same conversation is gambling in atlantic city spell of the ruination now for las vegas we have learned that sometimes more competition just brings more players, more customers, more tourists into Las Vegas. You know, it seems that that's what really happens. Um, how did you get involved in, um, I, mean, I know you gamble, but how did, how did you get involved so, so, so much with the, uh, the Golden Knights? And I mean, you, you grew up in Michigan. You must have been a Detroit uh, Red fan, Wings fan, right? Yeah, right. Red Wings. I mean, the Detroit, when I mean, they were, a, a dynasty at one time in hockey, mm -hmm. right? You probably grew up loving this team, right? Now you come to Las Vegas. When you first moved here, did you still follow the uh, the Detroit team? Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And then who? And now Detroit came into um, into the T-Mobile to play a game. Right. And how did you how did you feel? Well, it's funny because that that game when Detroit played against the Golden Knights was mm -hmm. a pretty defining moment to me, and it's a moment I'll never forget. You know, I I had. Um, about 150 people that we flew in from Detroit that wanted to see the Red Wings play mm -hmm. at the new expansion team. It was the second game of the season. So I was a bit conflicted in what I was going to wear. So what I ended up wearing was I wore a Red Wings cap and I wore a Golden Knights, you know, Golden Knights outfit, right. uh, Golden Knights jersey. And, and I knew at that, at that moment when, when the Golden Knights scored their first goal, I, and it's, this was not something I had thought about in advance, but when they scored their first goal, I mean, I cheered, and I, I mean, I knew, I, I flipped. I love Las Vegas, and I, I mean, I knew at that point there was no question. Right. I'm going to always love the Detroit Red Wings. I'm going to always love the team that I you know, kind of grew up with. But, uh, but boy, I, I'm 100% I'm Golden Knights fan. Yeah. Yeah, a similar thing happened to me. I grew up in Philadelphia, and, and uh, you know, when the, when the Flyers came into the T-Mobile, I mean, I knew where I stood right away, right away. Yeah. But now you're involved with the youth hockey, um, Golden Knights youth hockey team. Uh, summer, what is it, the summer uh, league or it, it, all year round? Well, no, this is all year round. So uh -huh. this is the whole youth program okay. that the Golden Knights are putting together here. And how does it work exactly? Okay. Look, it didn't exist a couple of years ago, right. right? Right. I mean, look, the adults didn't know what hockey was, right? Uh, now we have kids, you know, four, five, six-year-old, ten-year-old. I mean, they're all, you know, wearing, you know, Golden Knight uh, gear, want to play hockey, want to learn how to skate. Right. Right. Yeah, it's it's a great program. Um, you know, I think. What uh, what the Golden Knights, what Kerry Bubolts has done, and with with Bill Foley's you know direction, they are building what's going to turn out to be. We're going to talk about this a decade from now. That one of the best youth um, sports programs, one of the best youth hockey programs in the history of North America. They went out and hired some of the the, the, the the greatest guys, the greatest coaches, and it's a really really formalized program. So it starts with the little guys where. It's, you got to go through what's called learn to skate. Once you get past that, then you get to the next level, which is learn to play. And then once you get promoted from that, you go to you go to a program called Lil Knights, and uh, that's where they get their first official jersey. And uh, you know, and then then eventually they work their way up to where they get a stick, and then they get to practice with a puck, and then they get to have games. So it's it's a real real organized type of thing. And I, I think I think it won't be too far down the road where you're going to start seeing, um, you know, in the NHL draft, we're going to have, you know, Vegas kids that are going to be drafted, just like it is in baseball and football. Yeah, now, now you know, what is it, on Sunday, and we open up the Review Journal, they have a page of, you know, minor league and major league players right. from Las Vegas that are in the majors. Right. We'll have it in hockey, too. I think we will. We're going yeah. to grow our own. Yeah, I mean, and look, and... And, and the energy is just unbelievable, just unbelievable. Uh, uh, Mark Andre Fleury lives a couple doors from me, and, uh -huh. and when he leaves games, I can see kids, you know, waving and you know, uh, waving flags. Isn't that great for Las Vegas? Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. You know, to, to see that. Now uh, people are talking about getting an NBA team. What are your thoughts about that? Well, you know, I think I think the one thing that's going to be going to be interesting as time goes on. I think the Golden Knights have, have um, carved a special spot in the heart 
of uh, people from Las Vegas. Um, they're an expansion team, so this is you know this is Vegas's team. Uh, number two, they were they were um, first here, and and I think the energy and like what the guys did on the game day operations inside of T-Mobile was so so thrilling that I think I think the Golden Knights really uh, really carved out a special spot. But I also been a big believer that Las Vegas has been ready for a while for major league level sports. And, and I think the Golden Knights have shown that uh, Las Vegas can handle more professional sports teams. You know, I, growing up in a city that had all four um, professional sports teams, you could, some cities can handle four sports teams, some can't. I think Vegas still has a tremendous amount of, of supply of fans for other sports. So I, I'm, I'm very positive on sports in Las Vegas. Do you get a lot of requests now for tickets to uh, Las Vegas night games from old friends in Michigan? Oh my, yeah, <laughs> old friends from everywhere. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, fortunately, we have got we, we do have a lot of tickets. So, uh, you know, our casino hosts do a pretty good job on uh, doling them out, and uh, and we we have a lot of people come visit. So it's been great for business as well. Oh, it's it's been amazing. You go to a typical game, particularly when there's a Canadian team there, and it's almost one third of the arena practically mm -hmm. is filled with tourists. Now, I, I think people assumed that um, that the gaming industry would benefit from tourists coming in from Chicago and, and Calgary and Toronto to watch the games. But I don't think anybody envisioned it to be to the extent that it was. I, I agree. I think uh, <clears throat> I think I think everyone had some expectations. I mean, I think uh, both as a sponsor yourself and, and, and ourself, ourselves. Uh, I think we got more than what we bargained for. Oh, we took ch big chances. Yeah, we, big chances. And, yes. and I think I think uh, we were all very positively uh, surprised how things played out. Obviously, everyone's surprised how great the team did, but um, but overall, I think I think I think we were all we were all uh, a bit surprised on how well it worked out, and, and it was very exciting. Yeah. Did you go back to any of the playoff games in any of the other cities? Um, no, I, I went to uh, I went to the games here, and uh, you know at the downtown Las Vegas Event Center we, right. we do these watch parties, and, and they're fantastic, by but, the way. Thank you. I've been thank to them. You. Yeah, during the playoffs. So um, we've enjoyed uh, spending the time um, at the downtown Las Vegas Event Center, and you know watching these watching these road games on a 72 foot screen with 6,000 Golden Knights fans. So I spent uh, I spent the road games here uh, watching watching with uh, watching with everybody. I've been very proud of our fans, and we really had great fans, and I've noticed when visiting teams come in, we treat them with respect, and, mm -hmm. and they all, like, hey, this is Vegas, you're a tourist, it's all, you know, have a great time, and, and um, it's a great energy. Mm -hmm. I asked you because when I went back to Washington for some of the, uh, the final games, and I couldn't believe how rude and how mistreated the Las Vegas fans were mm. in Washington. And a lot of them did comment to me when they had been to Vegas what an incredible experience they had and how great the fans were in Vegas. Um, you know, it's, it's tough going into a, a different um, stadium, a different arena. You know, the fans, uh, it's hockey, you know, fans are tough. But in Vegas, uh, we've, we've been able to, to really, uh, you know, offer, um, offer visiting fans a, a great experience. You know, um it's funny you brought this up. I didn't know we would end up talking about this, but uh, but I, I've experienced this uh, myself when I've been on, you know, at, at a road game for a team mm -hmm. I'm rooting for, and uh, I made a personal commitment to myself that I knew there'd be a lot of visitors coming in, and I think because Vegas is so tourist friendly, um, every every uh, game I was at T-Mobile, I, I wanted to go out and I wanted to meet ten different people or groups, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just went up to say, hey. Uh, my name's Derek. Just shook mm -hmm. their hand, gave him my business card, and I said, "I just want to tell you, thank you very much for spending uh, two or three days with us here in Las Vegas, and uh, and uh, hope you enjoy yourself and, and all that." Mm -hmm. Because I've seen I've seen a lot of a lot of rough nights, you know, and nights back in Detroit at Joe Louis Arena wasn't necessarily right. the most friendly. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places where it gets tough. So, I think I think uh, I think Vegas, um, because we are a tourism-based industry, um, tourist tourism-based city. Um, and I try to try to make sure that we touched a lot of people. And uh, that, anyway, your comment in Washington, well, to, to say that people told you that people from Vegas were, were pretty oh, cool, yeah. that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, I told them they need to take some lessons from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, you know, there's nothing worse than a non-gracious winner. <laughs> anyway, um, God, we talked about uh, the the sports book. We talked about the uh, the new hotel. You won't tell me the name of the new hotel, but um, you're going to have a a pedestrian bridge or something crossing the street, or, or and, and to also talk to me about what's going on in Fremont Street. They're doing a renovation with the uh, the roof and the lights. Yeah, I, I, I think this is a, this is a big topic here. Um, the the Fremont Street, the the main attraction, the Viva Vision screen is now uh, is now going to get, be, be completely replaced. Uh, the screen itself is about 20 years old. Uh, technology's changed quite a bit in the last 20 years, so we're excited about about building a whole new Viva Vision screen, and that's going to allow us to to um, have shows during the day as well as at night, and we think it's going to really increase visitation for, for, for Fremont Street and that's a project that's going to get started um, just uh, just around the end of the year. And how long does that project take? Oh, it'll take about a year, panel so, by panel and everything like that. So there won't be any shows for oh, a year? Oh, no, no, no. no. The shows continue? will always continue. The shows will always continue. Uh, but for a period of time, there's going to be a few panels out here and there as, uh -huh. we, as we go through the whole renovation. Be better than the freeway, right? That, oh that's yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that okay. you know, <laughs> Project Neon's uh, wiped us out a couple of weekends here and there, but uh, yeah. but you know, it's going to be another great thing for Vegas once once this project's done. When they uh, put did the the Fremont Street um, canopy, it was what 65 million lights initially they put in there, and and it was state of the art at the time. But leave it to Las Vegas to keep changing, keep renovating, keep it fresh. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's terrific. Okay, so uh, what, what's in view? What's your prediction? You're a sportsman. Tell me about the Golden Knights next season. Ooh, you know it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know the the Are first. Are we going to miss James Neal? I think we'll miss James Neal. I think we'll miss James Neal. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but but the one thing I think m maybe uh, we got to think about is is the the young guys coming up on the Golden Knights are pretty special. Uh, uh. I mean, you, you could argue that this might be the best crop of, of younger guys of any mm -hmm. team in the league with all these first round draft picks the last couple of years. So I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I mean, we lost James Neal, and we lost a couple of other guys, but hockey usually have a little more turnover. So the core of this team is the same. Um, it'll be interesting uh, with, with Coach Gallant, but he's he's experienced. Uh, he dealt with uh, dealt with uh, a new group of guys last year, and now it's their second year. So I, I think we're going to be all right. Right, and you can watch them either at the arena. If you can't catch a game at the arena, the D is the second best place in town to catch the game. Thank you, Derek Stevens. Thanks, Ed. Great to Thanks. see you.